Hi parents, my name is John and I'd like to give you a brief tour of Google Classroom. Now typically I'm creating videos for teachers to help them use technology in the classroom. A bunch of them asked me to put together a video to help parents understand Google Classroom so that you can support your student as they're learning from home. In this video we're going to take a look at some of the parent components of Google Classroom and also give you some insight into the tools that you can use to help your student identify their upcoming assignments, avoid missing and late work, and view the feedback from their teacher. Let's dive into Google Classroom and get started. Now it's important to know that you will not be able to sign in to Google Classroom using a personal account. Only your students school provided Gmail account will be able to access the course. So you'll need to instruct your student to sign in to his or her account using a Chromebook, an iPad, a phone, your family desktop computer. That's what we've done here. So the student is signed in and we're going to access Google Classroom. You can do that by clicking the Google Waffle over on the uh, right side and click on the Classroom app or you can just type in classroom.google.com. So once you do that, you're going to end up in the classroom home page. Each of these cards represents a different class your student is enrolled in. Depending on their age and grade, they'll have anywhere from one to six or seven different classes. Let's take a look at the first class, English 10. I'm just going to click to open. When you open the class, you're going to end up on the stream page. The stream page is kind of the announcement center for Google Classroom. This is where you're going to see announcements from the teacher, updates, reminders, uh, class posts and discussions, things like that. There's no assignments on the stream page. These are just kind of reminders and updates. To look at the assignments, we're going to head over to the classwork page. That's the second area of Google Classroom. And this is where we'll see all of the learning content. Now, the first thing I want to point out is the topics. This right here and this right here, these are topics. Topics are like folders. They just organize the assignments into collections. Inside of that topic, we have several different things. This is just kind of like an introduction post. This is an assignment, discussion question, assignment, assignment. So there'll be a variety of learning things, anywhere from one to 10, just again, depends on the teacher and the age of your student. To view the details for an assignment, we're going to click right on the assignment itself. And that's where we'll see any instructions and attachments provided by the teacher. Now, I always recommend clicking on view assignment to see the full details for the assignment. This will show you several different things. You'll see how many points the assignment is worth, when it's due, any attachments provided by the teacher, um, private comments, class comments. There's a lot of information on this page. Students frequently won't click view assignment, and so they don't see all of the de these details, and so sometimes they miss certain things. This particular assignment has an attachment provided by the teacher. You can see that there. Um, this one has been submitted. Students just have to click that submit, unsubmit button uh, to turn in their work. That's a quick overview of the structure for Google Classroom. Let's take a look at some tools that you have access to as a parent to support your students' learning. Google Classroom has a feature for parents called Guardian Summaries. This will provide you with a regular progress report on the work your student has completed and the upcoming assignments they need to begin working on. Now, just to recap, you will not be able to log in to Google Classroom using your personal Gmail account. Only your student with their school assigned Google account will be able to access the content of Google Classroom. The progress reports allow you to see updates on a regular basis and have conversations with your students about the work that is missing, completed, and scheduled to be completed soon. Here's how the Guardian Summary feature works. Your teacher must enable this feature and must enter your email address. Make sure that your student's teacher has your current email and you can even request to begin receiving these progress reports. You'll accept that invitation and can decide whether you want to receive a daily or weekly summary. Let's take a look at that progress. I'm going to go ahead and into my email account. This is the invitation that you'll receive. Let's open that up. You'll need to accept the invitation. And that will take you to this page here where you can select the frequency of those progress reports. You can select a daily report, which gets sent at the end of each day, around four or five o'clock on a daily basis, 
or a weekly summary, which is sent every Friday afternoon. Once you've made your selection, that will be saved, and you'll begin receiving those reports on the progress of your student. Once you've accepted the invitation to receive guardian summaries, you'll begin receiving those emails. Each summary is divided into three parts, missing work, upcoming work, and class activity. The emails can be short or long, depending on how many activities and assignments the teacher has posted during the week. First section will be missing assignments. So here we can see that the student has two missing assignments, one in US history and one in um, American literature. Now you won't be able to click on these assignments. You cannot get into Google Classroom, but you can use these as a discussion point for your student. So when they return from school, at the end of the day, you can say, hey, I see you have two missing assignments. What do we need to do to uh, make sure that those get turned in? The second section will be upcoming work. If you're receiving a daily assign, uh, summary, you'll see any assignments that are scheduled to be posted the next day. If you're receiving a weekly summary, you'll see upcoming assignments for the next week. Uh, this is just, again, an FYI to help your student plan their schedule and for you to know what assistance they might need in completing these assignments. The final section is class activity, and this will display any announcements the teacher has posted and any assignments that have been completed. So this is just a, uh, a good, again, discussion point. You can see that your student is learning about free speech, so you can ask them what they're learning, have a discussion about that. Um, these assignments have been completed. They're done on time. You can ask um, for some more information about that and have conversations with your student. Well, hopefully by now you have a basic understanding of how Google Classroom is organized. You also know about the Guardian Summary feature. You can request those updates from your teacher and you'll begin receiving them. But the question is, what do you do when you find out your student has late or missing work or five big projects next week? How do you help them? I'd like to show you the To Do and Class Calendar page. Now, your Guardian Summary will give you a basic description and the title of the assignment, but you will not be able to actually click on that Guardian Summary to go into Google Classroom to see the details of that assignment. The Guardian Summary is simply meant to be a discussion point so you can sit down with your student and review their work through Google Classroom. I would recommend sitting down with your student, having them sign into their account, and looking at these two helpful pages. Now let's take a look at the student account. I'm logged in as a student. Now this is actually where we started this video. We were right here on the um, home page of Google Classroom. These are our different courses. These are the two pages that we're gonna talk about, to do and calendar. When you see that your student has missing work or a lot of upcoming assignments, you can click on to do, and this is laid out very similar to the Guardian summaries. You can see assigned work, these are due in the next week, missing assignments, and completed assignments. So we have some work to do here. Now we can go to assigned. We can actually click on these and see the details for each of these assignments and work on them. We can go to the missing tab, see these missing assignments, select them and go ahead and complete them. This one, for example, all the student has to do is click this turn in button and it's done. That's it. So this is a very helpful page where you can sit down with your student and help them complete and review their work. Now you can also look at the class calendar page. It's very similar to the to-do page, except that it's laid out in a date format. So we can look through this and see when the assignments uh, were assigned, what's coming up, and we can actually filter this by class if we want to. When you get that Guardian summary, review it, sit down with your student, have them sign into Google Classroom, and you can begin reviewing these pages with them. I hope this has been a helpful overview of Google Classroom and that you can use these tools to support your student as they learn from home this school year.